didn't protect the quarterback as much well as we should have. We gave up a few sacks, more than I'd like to see. We didn't establish our running game as good as I'd like to have seen. But hey, a lot of guys played hard and they played good. Jody Morse graded out 82%, did a super job for us at offensive center. Uh, what about Kelly Blackwell? Seven catches, 85 yards, a key touchdown. Some of those guys really played hard and they played well. We just got to get all 11 playing hard and playing well. And when that happens, look out, it's going to be an offensive explosion because the Horned Frogs are really doing some things well right now. Number one, we've had one turnover in two games. We're fourth in the nation in turnover ratio. That's why we're 2-0, and undefeated, and have a chance for a really good season. We've got to continue to maintain that kind of mental toughness, that mental intensity, where we take care of business. That means no interceptions, cut down on fumbles. Don't do the things that end up beating yourself. As if out of a Norman Rockwell painting, Eamon Carter Stadium looked almost incandescent last Saturday night. Maybe it was the glow from faces like this. Perhaps it was the heat generated by a vocal crowd. Better yet, it was probably the fire coming from a team hoping to go 2-0 for the first time in five years. Motkins in motion, comes to the short side of the field. Play wants to throw. It's complete. First down. McPherson at the 50 midfield. The Frogs scored their first touchdown early in the second quarter, giving them an odd 8-7 lead. Twice. Stu Dickens, the lone back set from the Cardinals. 14-yard line. Clay wants to throw. He's got a man open. Blackwell touchdown. Kelly Blackwell from the 14-yard touchdown. And Leon Clay took his time, finally found him. And Blackwell with his second touchdown of 1991. Blackwell would go on to have another outstanding night. Seven catches for 85 yards. His backup, Mike Nowak, also looked good with two critical receptions for 31 more yards. Uh, Mike Nowak, boy, I thought that pass was going to go out of his hands, but Mike Nowak at six foot five makes a sure-handed catch. It's Nowak on the short side of the field along with Pearson rolling out to the left is Clay. He'll throw. It's completed inside the 40, and again, it's Mike Nowak. On a night when the TCU ground game would be held to 78 yards rushing, Cedric Dickens would turn in the night's biggest run. He's at the five, four, three touchdowns. Stu Dickens into the end zone for TCU, and the Frogs get another touchdown here against the Ball State Cardinals. Not a bad way to start the second half. Despite an aching back, head coach Jim Wacker stayed on the field rather than coach from the press box. After all, the best way to get a feel for the TCU offense is to see it up close. It's Woodley moves into the slot back spot from the nine. Clay wants to throw. He's been doing that all night. And touchdown! Our score now. TCU leading. Ball State 22 to 7. <laughs> On a night when all the bounces did not go TCU's way, the home team still came out with a much deserved. 22 to 16 win. Heck of a ball game, man. Yeah, you played well, all of you. You got a lot to be proud of. Great ball game, man. Let's turn the pages of the scrapbook now and go back to 1949. The Horned Frogs were playing Oklahoma State. This was a very rich rivalry. We were playing in Oklahoma, on the road. Lindy Berry was a quarterback. TCU versus Oklahoma State, October 1949. In this game in Fort Worth, TCU's all-purpose star, Lindy Berry passes for 270 yards, a large total back in those days. A 33-all tie until the game's final minutes, and then the Cowboys' goal line stand preserves the tie. 33-all, the final score. The Horned Frogs-Cowboys rivalry is a rich one. 
the linebackers. Brad Smith, his best game ever, 11 tackles, was all over the football field. Ten of those were unassisted. How about Reggie Anderson, the sophomore, again? Boy, I mean, a big sack and again flies around to the football. So many guys playing well. Our defensive ends, Tunji Bolden, Roosevelt Collins. As a pair, I think that's the best we've had since I've been here at TCU. And in the secondary, Tony Rand. He had 10 tackles, flies all around. He's a leader back there. Hey, that defensive unit is playing football. For the second straight game, the TCU defense played some excellent football. Against Ball State, the Horned Frogs gave up just 251 yards. Here are some of the night's outstanding defensive plays. Like to do. Nice drive by the Cardinals. First and 10, TCU 34. Not much up the middle. First and 10 on the pitch. Back to Coach. He's hit hard. One on one. And knocked down. Brad Smith. New wants to throw. Ball is knocked away. Great hit by Greg Evans. One back set in motion is the tight end. Stu Allison, the give is to Crooms, and he won't get the first down. Third quarter, Frogs up 15 to 7. Crooms again on the carry, bounces around. He gets knocked out of the backfield and finally is wrapped up. First and 10 in motion, Travis Moore. Far side of the field. Give is to Crooms. He'll be wrapped up. Tungy Bolden is there. Reggie Anderson shows up. New will have to throw. Has plenty of time, gets it down and is knocked down by Reggie Anderson. The pitch is to Crooms around the right side, the short side of the field, and a one-on-one -on -one tackle. He's wrapped up that time by Royal West. It's fourth and six from the TCU 10-yard line. Travis Moore in motion. Who's going to throw the football? He looks, has some time, he's going to be sacked. In on the play for TCU, Alex Molina. We had a good base the first game. We've just been gradually increasing ever since. So, yeah, I feel like we're getting better. You know, it seems we're always talking about offense and defense, but what about the third part of football? What about specialty teams? Did they ever play a big factor in that game? You know, we had some bad moments when we snapped a punt over the punter's head and they ended up getting a safety out of it, and we made some critical errors. But what about the big plays? How about Anthony Hickman averaging over 20 yards, 23 yards of punt return on three returns? How about Darren Schultz recovering the uh, kick after the safety and uh, giving us great field position, a great play by Darren? And, of course, uh, another big, big game play. What about Kyle McPherson knocking the punt out of the punter's hand, recovering the fumble, setting up a touchdown? We scored on the next play. Especially teams, man, are they critical. But the biggest play of the game, let's take a look at the American Airlines play of the game for this one. It was that great touchdown to Kelly Blackwell. Two Dickens, the lone back set from the Cardinals. Fifth 14 yard line. Play wants to throw. He's got a man open. Blackwell touchdown. Kelly Blackwell from the 14 yard touchdown. And Leon Clay took his time, finally found him. And Blackwell with his second touchdown of 1991. <laughs> Tonight, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, it's the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and I promise you it's going to be a great ball game. They've had some problems. They're a young football team. They've been struggling a little bit. But, hey, they got a quarterback in Kenny Ford that can throw the ball. I promise you, he was one of the most highly recruited guys in the nation coming out of high school three years ago. And what about Stacy Satterwhite? Fine a defensive lineman as there is. He's been hurt, but he's just coming back. He played some last week. He'll be at full strength this week. We've got to strap it on. We've got to get ready for a great ball game. Because remember last year, what a game. The Horned Frogs had to scrap and fight. We were behind the entire game. And all of a sudden, finally at the end, we finally get a touchdown. And then with a minute to go, we kick a field goal to go ahead. And then the great interception by Greg Evans. He runs it in to the end zone, and we end up winning by 10 points. That score was misleading, folks. It was a tough, tough ball game. 
The 1990 contest between the Horned Frogs and the Cowpokes may have been one of the most exciting finishes of 1990. Down 21-7, TCU finally ties the game early in the fourth quarter. Neither team is able to threaten until it gets late. First, the Cowboys fumble the ball with just two minutes to play. Got three timeouts left, draw play. Hudson fumbles at the 15 and the Frogs get the ball. TCU converts the miscue into a game-winning field goal with 38 seconds left on the clock. Noak puts it down, Wilkinson puts it up and through. And TCU has the lead with 30 seconds to go. But we're not done yet. Here, Wheeler back to pass from his 15. Clock runs down to 20 seconds. He overthrows the receiver. The final, TCU 31, Oklahoma State 21. But as they like to say on these TV sports shows, the game was much closer than the score indicated. Leon Clay, the athlete. I promise he's one of the finest athletes I've ever had the privilege of coaching. Man, he can run, he can throw, he can do it all. But you know what's really special about Leon? The kind of human being he is, the kind of man he is. I promise you, he doesn't have an enemy in the entire world. Everybody loves him because he loves people. He relates. He's got a warmth and a presence about him and a poise and a confidence that is something really special. Does he mean a lot to this football team? And he will throughout this season and throughout next year, his senior year. Leon, you're a great guy, and, uh, you know, we miss you, and uh, I wish you all the best, uh, the speed of your recovery, and I just, uh, my prayers and thoughts are with you that you come back next year and have a healthy season. Um, well, Leon's a good person. He's, he's one of the more quieter leaders on the team. You know, he doesn't say much. He just goes out and does it. You know, like pre-game, I would see him. I would go down to the tunnel, and he'd be the only person down there just kind of off to himself. So he's, a, he's one of the more serious leaders on the team. He doesn't boast of nothing about what he can do, what he can't do, or nothing. He just shows it on the field and everything. And um, he's going to be a... Um, big loss to us, but uh, we're going to have to go ahead and just pick up our self and just keep on going without him. We're going to miss him, though. Since I didn't get to play much, he's always there to pick me up, give me confidence, let me know that, that he's got confidence in me, and, you know, he's a big in inspiration in that part. He's got the temperament that's perfect and that, you know, every quarterback should have that kind of temperament. So, I mean, he's always, always smiling, always happy, and, you know, that's, that's hard to do. For this to happen again, you know, I, I hurt just as much as you do. I know, I know it's tough, but uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to win this one. We're going to win it for you, and we're going to win the rest of it for you. And whatever this team does is going to be revolving around you because you've shown type of work habits that need to be done to win ball games. We're going to win. Leon really is a special young man, and we're going to miss him. But hey, all the other players are just simply going to step it up a notch. They're going to play a little harder. They're going to play a little better because we've got us a tough ball game. Do you realize something? It was 1956, the last time the TCU Horned Frogs won their first three games in a row. That's the kind of start we need this season. Let's hope we're going to make it happen.
races won it all. These daring young frogs promise to steer TCU football aboard the Triple Shoot Express to new horizons and beyond. Hallelujah, that hadn't been done since 1956. Uh, you know, let's get back there to the 40s and the 50s when the Horned Frogs were one of the best teams in the Southwest Conference every year. In College Station, an autopsy performed. A reminder, man. Blood Frog Pride. The Triple Shoot Express. That's right. At TCU, Horn Frog football truly flies. And navigating this multidimensional marvel of aeronautical technology is a squadron of bold, determined men, those daring young frogs. TCU Football with Jim Wacker is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas, Radio Shack, American Airlines, Blackman Mooring Stomatic, Gatorade, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of North Texas, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, Southwest Land Title, Bruce Alford, Cambridge Clothier, Benny Keith Gift Store, Malcolm Loudon, and F. Howard Walsh, Jr. Now here's Jim Wacker. Welcome to the TCU Football Show. Once again, whew, I mean, you talk about a finish now. That was a finish. Now, it wasn't the way we had it planned, real frankly. At the end of the first half, boy, we were excited and rolling, and we played about as good a half of football as we've played since I've been at TCU. The second half, that was a different story. They had a young quarterback, a senior by the name of Kenny Ford, that got hot and all of a sudden missed a momentum. He changed sides on us. He jumped over there, and I mean, the Oklahoma State players, they made a game of this one. It came right down to the wire. When the Horned Frogs ran off the field last Saturday night at halftime, they held a commanding 21-0 lead over Oklahoma State. 349 total yards to 49 was their commanding performance. Blame the full moon if you want, but things got weird in Stillwater. Just ask Tunji Bolden. Unbelievable. <laughs> Literally unbelievable. It started with Kelly Blackwell about to make the score. 31-0 midway through the third quarter. After the ball's free, Oklahoma State, I think, has recovered. The Cowboys say they've got it at the one-yard line. To go from, you know, having a for sure at least three points, if not a touchdown, you know, if I hold on to it, to totally turning around the game and having them score three, you know, unanswered touchdowns, you know, it's just incredible. Incredible that OSU would score 21 points over the next 18 minutes. With just over three minutes to play, TCU held a tenuous 24-21 lead. Head coach Jim Wacker calls a third down play here to keep a final drive alive. Third and 11 from their own 14. Shade will drop. He's got a man open. Shipley is there. Toe! He hangs on to it. No! With one last chance to erase an improbable 24-point deficit, the Cowboys march inside the five for the game's final two plays. Let's go, Brad! Come on, defense! Come on, Rose! Get it on, Shady! Ford from the three. 34 seconds. Clock continues to wind down. Jumping over the top. No, it's Ford. Wrapped up on the fake. Seconds remain as Oklahoma State stays on the ground, hoping to score the go-ahead touchdown. Ford quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Again, they go to Barry, and he's up to the two and wrapped up. Steve. Ten seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds, seven. The clock continues to wind down. I don't think Four, they can get it off. Three, two, one. TCU has won the football game. The Frogs have won the football game as time runs out. Texas Christian University holds on to an exciting 24 to 21 victory over the There was a reason to celebrate Saturday night now. The Horned Frogs, 3-0 and for the first time since 1956. That's a great feeling. I'm really proud of these young men. What about the offense? Man alive, did they explode in that first half. That's as good a half, once again, as we have played since I've been here at TCU. 
you know, uh, first of all, uh, man, Matt Vogler comes in there. He completes 11 out of 17 for 95 yards. Has a great first quarter. But, hey, we drop one here. We miss a play there. We can't quite get it in the end zone. Tim Shade comes off the bench. He's been told he's going to get to play the entire second quarter. And, boy, does he light it up. He ends up hitting 16 of 18 passes, 10 in a row at one point, and I mean we explode. Three touchdowns going at halftime with a 21-0 lead. But you know the real story? To me, the real story was the offensive line. We had two guys playing new positions at both tackle spots, Mike Black and uh, Boyd Milby. Man, did those guys come on and do a good job for us, particularly in pass protection. But the real key, John Marsh and Jody Morse. They were our offensive linemen of the week. They fought, they battled in the trenches, and they did one heck of a job to give those quarterbacks time to throw it. Hoping to go 3-0 for the first time in 35 years, the Frogs dominate play in the first half. Matt Vogler gets the start and completes 11 of 17 passes for 95 yards. The senior completing six in a row at one point. At the 35, close to the 40, and CU needs to get to the Cowboy 49-yard line. Vogler wants to throw in the pocket, down, and complete. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and he finds David Lewis. Go, Frogs, go! Go, Frogs, go! Waiting offstage, though, freshman Tim Shade. He'd replace Vogler and lead TCU on three long drives, all for scores. The first included Stephen Shipley's return to the lineup. Shipley, it's completed. Tim Shade to his roommate, David Lewis in motion, to Dickens the one back. Shade wants to throw again. Down the field, he's open, Shipley's got some room, the 20, the 15, still on his feet, down to the 10. Mike Nowak in motion, they fake to Stu Dickens, rolling to his right, he's got some room and he's open. Shipley popped at about the seven, still on his feet. Man, is he hard to bring down at about the three. Doing the honors, Curtis Motkins. Second and goal with a wishbone formation. Tim Shade from the one. TCU trying to score. Motkins rolls to his right, and he's in. Touchdown, TCU. Shade would go on to break a team record, completing 10 straight passes. His second impressive drive includes this catch by Kelly Blackwell, who would catch 10 passes for 121 yards. This time, though, the drive ends in a Cedric Dickens run. On the pitch, back to Dickens. Touchdown, TCU! By the end of the half, the Hot Frogs would make it 21-0. The Cowboy defense. Shea's got some room. Can he outrun the defense? He can just throw it to Kelly Blackwell for a three-yard score. I thought Shade was going to run. He had all kinds of room. And he said, heck, why do I need to run the football? Let me just throw it to Blackwell. And Kelly gets another touchdown. That's his third of the year. Shade would finish with 26 completions in 36 tries for 281 yards. Five different receivers would have at least five catches, including Shipley, who had arthroscopic surgery just three weeks ago. I'll tell you one thing, I need to get out there and run some. I was out of shape. You know, I've been riding the bike a lot, and I really haven't been running until this like first time in a game situation since hanging in last year. And for big catches, how about this one by Mike Nowak late in the game? I need to sit down and ask him why they don't try and throw more to Mike Nowak. In the end, the difference was Jeff Wilkinson's 25-yard field goal in the third quarter. While it seemed insignificant at the time, it allowed the Frogs to walk off the field winners in a game TCU should have never lost. It's a great game. We will take it and win. Great job, O-line. Great job. Proud of you. Oh, proud. Great job, man. Great job. Son of a gun. More good job in there. Calvin Brown. Scott, good job. You have a heck of a ball, man. The offense really did explode on Saturday night. That was fun, the passing game. What about the receivers? Was it nice having Stephen Shipley and Richie, Richard Woodley back? Those guys, five catches apiece, some big ones. And what about Kelly Blackwell again? Ten catches, 121 yards. But you know, sometimes we talk too much about those offensive stats. The real name of the game this year, it's the Horn Frog defense. Man, are those guys playing fourth in the nation right now in rushing defense, twelfth in total defense. That's where you win football games. Tupac, fourth down, will throw. Oh, and it hit, bounces off the helmet of a cowboy. And the ball will turn. That was Larry Brown. I have actually seen balls get stuck. In, in a guy's face mask once like that. Boom. Wow. 
One thing you can always say about Larry Brown, he really knew how to use his head playing football. Hey, I am proud of that young man. To start as a rookie in the secondary for the Dallas Cowboys, that is special. But you know he's got a lot of old teammates here that are playing pretty good defense right now. You know, what about Reggie Anderson, Brad Smith, the two uh, linebackers in this game? <laughs> Reggie had 14 tackles. Brad had 12 tackles. We are getting great linebacker play right now. That is exciting. Hey, Alex Molina, he was our best defensive lineman. All over the field, had three pressures and a bunch of tackles. And in the secondary, Craig Evans was the guy. Again, made plays all over the football field. That defense is playing football. Defense! When you talk about the Horn Frogs' defense against Oklahoma State, you almost have to consider there were two different games played. In the first half, TCU held the Cowboys to just one first down. Here's how they did it. And he is wrapped up and thrown for a loss by Tunji Bolden. Third and five from their own 45-yard line. Cowboys want to throw, they do, and it hits the official. Second and three from the 25-yard line, far side of the field, and back in making the tack tackle quickly for TCU. And to make the stop was Alex Molina. They need six for the first down. He wants to throw, and he does, and it is complete. And shy of the first down, does he have enough? I don't think so. So dominating was TCU's defense that Oklahoma State had the ball for just nine minutes in the first half. But maybe the Frog knew something, because it was a different story as the sky turned from blue to black. Ford wants to throw, he will. It's complete, another first down. This time down inside, he's got some room. At the 40, down to the 30, the 25. Cowboys with a one back set. Ford acts like he's gonna throw, now he wants to run. No, he throws, touchdown. And he Ford, Ford gives it this time. The Berrien, touchdown Oklahoma State. Corey Ford will stay in as the quarterback. Ford down the field, man open. Touchdown Oklahoma State. While Oklahoma State can be credited with some inspired play in the second half, the bounces and certainly some of the calls went against TCU. Take the interception here, for instance. Watch the ball hit the ground first. Need a second look? Now watch the ball closely. And then on the Cowboys' final drive, intentional grounding? You make the call. Oh, the college is there. Come on, D, help me out, help me out, D. Nevertheless, playing outstanding defense in Stillwater, Roosevelt Collins. And how about Brad Smith? Smith would tally a team high 10 tackles. Reggie Anderson also had an outstanding night. Ford wants to throw, he will. Intercepted by TCU! Into the hands of Reggie Anderson. He threw it right to him, and Reggie Anderson comes up with maybe the play of the game. And if you like defense, how would you like to have these three straight plays on your resume? Thompson will go nowhere. Right now, Pat Jones probably wishing he had Sanders in the backfield because they go nowhere. It is third and one from the 40-yard line, and not enough for the first down. I don't think so. The small contingent of loyal Frog fans that made the four-hour trip to Stillwater got their money's worth with the game's dramatic finish. Still, the Horned Frogs were able to hold off the Cowboys as the clock ran out in the fourth quarter. What a finish! What a second half! Celebration time! What we get celebrate on that guy to win, we'll never celebrate! Let's go, Let's go back now and look at our TCU scrapbook. The year was 1956. The running back was Jim Swink, second in the Heisman Trophy voting, first team All-American two years in a row. You know what about that 56 team? That was the last time they won their first three in a row. Hey, and they ended up winning the conference. Maybe that's a good sign for these old horned frogs. How about 55 the year before? That year they won the first four in a row and won the conference. Let's hope the 1991 Horned Frog can repeat that kind of action. Jim Swink, All-American in 1955, 
was the best running back ever to wear TCU's purple and white. Sweet gained over 2,600 yards rushing in his career at TCU, most of it on long runs like this, a 46-yarder against Texas in 1954. Joe Youngblood finally puts the brakes on the swinker at the Texas 2. Against Kansas in 1955, Chuck Curtis gives Swink the ball. Jim follows his blocking round right in, then accelerates past the defenders to gallop 80 yards for a touchdown. The second longest run from scrimmage in TCU history. Swink seemed to have a knack for driving the Longhorns batty. Against the Austin School in 1955, all 11 defenders get a shot at Jim as he heads around left end and cuts back toward the middle and then makes another sharp left to go in unscathed after a 60-yard walk. Incredible in the first half, the Horn Frog quarterbacks, two new guys on the block, they go in there and complete 28 out of 36 passes, throw it all over the football field. Man, what an explosion. You got to ask the question, how in the world does that happen with those two young quarterbacks? Hey, let's go ask Bob the best, their offensive coordinator. If anybody's got the answer, he does. Thank you, Coach Wacker. Um, let me explain a little bit about what our thinking is as far as the one back, no back attack is concerned. Uh, what we've got on the screen right now is a play from our Oklahoma State game Saturday night. What we've done here is lined up in a no-back formation. We've taken our running back and put him down, put him down here as an eligible receiver. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five eligible receivers, yet Oklahoma State is only covering four of them. We have an uncovered situation here uh, to Kelly Blackwell because they failed to bump a linebacker over the top of him to take away an uncovered situation. Matt Vogler, our quarterback, and Kelly Blackwell are tied in, are both on the same page. They recognize the defense, and a quick pass turns into a 12-yard game. Sun has started to pop out at Lewis Field. Matt Vogler on the pass. Kelly Blackwell, he's at the 35, close to the 40, in fact, to the 41 before he is finally brought down. Another way to possibly get confusion uh, out of the defense is to line up in a one-back formation. This happens to be our trips right formation, and motion the back out of there rather than just breaking the huddle and lining him up. Oklahoma State took their linebacker and motioned him out with Curtis uh, because he did become now a viable receiver in the route, yet they didn't make an adjustment uh, with the corner as far as Kelly Blackwell was concerned. Again, he takes a slow outside release. Tim Shade took quick one step, short, easy throw, taking advantage of a mistake by the defense. TCU from their own 20-yard line. Shade on the quick drop inside to Blackwell. He's got room, 30, 35, up to the 37-yard line. I hope, and what we hope for each and every week, just like this week in Lubbock, uh, that we, again, have an opportunity to create confusion and have big plays. And Coach Wacker, that's the triple shoot. For an old running football coach now, after running the veer for so many years, it has really been fun going to that wide open, throw it all over the field kind of an attack. Once again, Bob DeBest, those offensive coaches, what a great job they've done, of course, along with the players. One of the key players, the guy that made the big touchdown catch on Saturday, Kelly Blackwell. It's again the American Airlines play of the game. Let's take a look. TCU going with the wishbone set against the Cowboy defense. Shea's got some room. Can he outrun the defense? He can just throw it to Kelly Blackwell for a three-yard score. I thought Shade was going to run. He had all kinds of room. And he said, heck, why do I need to run the football? Let me just throw it to Blackwell. And Kelly gets another touchdown. That's his third of the year. through the first quarter, 3-0, and oh, by the skin of our teeth, but we made it. And now it's the exciting part of the year. Now it's a conference schedule. And for openers this year, it's the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Man, do we have a challenge out there in Lubbock, Texas. Do you realize we have not beaten them since 84? 
We haven't beaten them in Lubbock since 1972, 19 years ago. What a great challenge for this young Horn Frog football team. And they're going to take it serious, folks, because Spike Dykes and crew, they've got a fine football team. I mean, they have given us all the trouble you could ever ask for. Guys like Jamie Gill and Robert Hall, their quarterbacks. Boy, have they lit it up against the Horn Frogs now. How about defense? Matt Wingo and company. And they've got the number one punter and the number one field goal kicker in the nation. We better go to play. This is a big one. Odds are the Horn Frogs are due. Consider that TCU has that lone win in Lubbock back in 1972 and that the Red Raiders have won the last six meetings between these two Southwest Conference rivals. Last year in Fort Worth, TCU ran up and down the field for nearly 500 yards of offense. Unfortunately, five turnovers cost the Purples 24 points. Tech winning again, 40 to 28. But losing streaks, as they like to say, are made to be forgotten. Oh, we're we're breaking back. Marks right now, so we might as well get that one too. Remember, it's Texas Tech next. Four and over. How long has it been? Four and over. I'm really excited about this Horn Frog football team. I think we have reason to be. Hey, they've done something that hasn't been done for a long, long time, but they've got a lot greater expectations than that. We are looking forward right now to this conference schedule, starting with Texas Tech. And if we come home 4-0, look out, folks. The city of Fort Worth is going to get excited. They're going to get fired up. I promise you the players are fired up. The old Frog Club members are fired up. And we want to paint the town purple. We want to do something really special for TCU, for Texas Christian University. And I believe these are the young men that are going to do it. It's all going to start today. It's going to be a big one. We hope some of you get out there to Lubbock to help support us and yell and scream and go make it happen in the stands. But also, if you're at home, you enjoy it on the radio. And you continue to back the purple, wear it with pride, and let's keep those horn frogs going. Football with Jim Wacker is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas, Radio Shack, American Airlines, Blackman Mooring Stomatic, Gatorade, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of North Texas, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, Southwest Land Title, Bruce Alford, Cambridge Clothier, Benny Keith Gift Store, Malcolm Loudon, and F. Howard Walsh, Jr. one at all. These daring young frogs promise to steer TCU football aboard the Triple Shoot Express to new horizons and beyond. Can you see this very short hair over mm -hmm. here? The Triple Shoot Express. That's right. And TCU Horn Frog football truly flies. And navigating this multi-dimensional marvel of aeronautical technology is a squadron of bold, determined men, those daring young frogs. Cracker is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas, Radio Shack, American Airlines, Blackman Mooring Stomatic, Gatorade, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of North Texas, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, Southwest Land Title, Bruce Alford, Cambridge Clothier, Benny Keith Gift Store, Malcolm Loudon, and F. Howard Walsh, Jr.
Now here's Jim Wacker. Hi, this is Jim Wacker. Welcome to the TCU pregame football show. Because we're excited right now. We're 4-0, and the last time the Horned Frogs were 4-0, 1955. Man alive, I was a senior in high school then. That's kind of scary. But we are on a roll, and the Frogs are playing good right now. They're hopping, and they're happy, and they're excited about the 1991 football team because this team has a chance to do something really special. Take a look. Saturday night, Texas Tech. Talk about a big win. Man, we had a lot of guys that played well and played hard. But on offense, you got to give the credit to that offensive line. In the first half, we couldn't get it in the end zone. And I mean, we were struggling. We had to settle for three field goals. Thank goodness for Jeff Wilkinson. He had a great night, hit three in a row, three for three, hit all his extra points. But in the second half, it was the offensive line. In the fourth quarter, did they dominate. And finally, we got that running game going. Curtis Motkin starts running up and down the field. The Horn Frogs drive for 72 yards and then 80 dry yards to put the game on ice. And was it ever a fun win? Hoping to exercise the demons of 19 years of frustration in Lubbock, the Horn Frogs came down the tunnel for Tech's homecoming, hoping to turn the Raiders an even brighter shade of red. Although Tech would outgain the Frogs 122 yards to 77 in the first quarter, the Frogs had the lead 6-0, thanks to the leg of Jeff Wilkinson, his practicing paying off, as his two first quarter field goals gave TCU that six-point margin. Wilkinson, the snap is down, the kick is up, and it's good. With 10.55 to go in the opening quarter of play, our score early is TCU 3, Texas Tech nothing. Frogs trying to add to their lead. Wilkinson's got time, Nowak again, the holder, far side hash mark, it's up, and it's good 321 to go here in the first quarter play and the frogs have struck again our score now a new one tcu six texas tech nothing on another beautiful night for football the raiders finally score four minutes into the third quarter jamie gill leading tech on an 80 yard drive ending in this five yard anthony lynn touchdown give to the second man through shy of the first down no touchdown texas tech although none of the current frogs had ever beaten tech none doubted their ability even after this third quarter interception. In motion is the freshman, Derek Cullors. Again, in second and 10 from their own 41, and picked off by Texas Tech, intercepted. You know, we just didn't, didn't quit and kept on fighting to the end, and you know, it's just such a great win right now. You know, nobody knows what to say about it. It's just kind of out there for a while. The game's dramatic turning point comes when Vogler and Tim Shade combine on the game's go-ahead drive late in the third quarter. Shade running the triple shoot Vogler under center in mostly running situations. Early in the fourth quarter, TCU has a first and goal at the Tech two-yard line. TCU out of the wishbone formation, pits back to Collars, tries to get around the caller, corner, and he is pushed out of bounds. Second and goal, TCU, Vogler on the keeper. He's down to the one, it's third and goal from the one. Vogler doesn't get in, out of the wishbone set. It's fourth and goal, Vogler, give to Collars, he jumps over and he's in. The score would give TCU a 16-13 lead. 25 seconds later, Roosevelt Collins would make the play of the night. He's got a man picked up. Roosevelt Collins has it at the 10. He's still on his feet. The 5. Touchdown, TCU. Perhaps the game's most impressive drive comes with TCU hoping to run out the clock, running the ball late in the game, protecting a 23-16 lead. The Frogs' Curtis Motkins gains most of his 94 yards right here. Motkins, oh, what a good move. All the way down inside the 35-yard line. Motkins with another great move inside the 25 to the 20. Oh, Curtis Motkins is piling up some yardage. Again scoring the touchdown, Derek Cullors. Three fourth-quarter touchdowns send most of the 40,000 fans off to an early homecoming party. Based on this fan's reaction, it wasn't much of a celebration. For the game, TCU would gain 345 yards on offense, converting nearly half their third downs. But even with a 14-point lead and over a minute to play, head coach Jim Wacker is still coaching, too busy to notice what's going on behind him. <laughs> For his first win in Lubbock, Wacker would get doused twice. He didn't mind, and neither did the Frogs. TCU is 4-0, and oh, and it was a pumped-up locker room afterward.
the offense really did explode in the fourth quarter. But hey, when you talk about explosions, the guy that exploded Saturday night was Roosevelt Collins. He had his best game ever as a Horned Frog. Just think, a week ago, he was chosen Southwest Conference Player of the Week. But this week, he comes back with 10 tackles, three pressures, a sack, and an interception near the end of the ball game that he runs 25 yards in for the touchdown. Hey, he had as good a game as any Horned Frog since I've been here. You were thinking black for a while. <laughs> we caught up with Roosevelt Collins in his portfolio and marketing class. The senior art major has some new material for that portfolio. How about last Saturday's dominating performance at Jones Stadium in Lubbock? They need to get to their own 25 to keep the drive going. Gill's going to have to go to the air to try and find the first down. He's got a man picked up. Roosevelt Collins has it at the 10. He's still on his feet. The 5. Touchdown, TCU. From the Tech TCU 27-yard line. Tech with the football. Gill will throw. And he's going to be sacked. Back inside the 35 at about the 37-yard line. Number 48, Roosevelt Collins. One back set again. He'll throw the football. He's hit hard. Coach Wagner says you never do as good as you think you did or you never do as bad as you think you did. So um, I just played and hopefully I can do better this week. Collins' classmates say he barely gets a word in edgewise in class. It is, though, a little different on the football field. Let's go, baby. Let's go. He's got to throw the ball. He's got to throw the ball, Lulu. And while he'll get his bachelor's degree in art, Collins is already working on a master's degree in football. Collins was unaware of the NFL scouts in the press box last Saturday, impressed with his performance. <laughs> no, I did know that, but it does make it special when you perform, you know, like the way you're supposed to at the right time. And in case you didn't notice, Collins makes up for all the time he spends with his teammates by carefully choosing his classes. Notice he's the only guy in this one. <laughs> it's not too bad, though, but uh, <laughs> when it comes to issues, they get the majority, so... They gang up on you. They gang up on me. <laughs> you know, there are lots of stats we can throw at you, but one of the most interesting ones in this ball game, in the last 44 minutes, we did not have one penalty. Now, that's executed. That's, you know, you can win with that kind of football. Man, we had a lot of guys, though, that executed. What about Richard Woodley? Six catches, 100 yards. Is it fun to see him back full speed again? And Curtis Motkins, his best year uh, uh, game this year, 94 yards rushing, 50 of it in the fourth quarter when the game was on the line. A lot of Horned Frogs played well, but let's see. How did those Horned Frogs in 1991 stack up with those 55 Horned Frogs once again? Because that was a great football team, folks. Look at those defensive statistics. <laughs> That old defense, they continue to play. Are they doing a great job? And Texas Tech, yeah, Roosevelt Collins, definitely. He had the game of his life. But a lot of other guys played well. We held them to 74 yards rushing. That's outstanding. They've got a fine rushing offense. And how about uh, in the second half? The defense held them to three points total in the second half. And that was with guys like Tony Rand and Rico Wesley going down with injuries and a bunch of guys in the secondary play and who hadn't played back there before. Uh, Gee, Calvin Jones played safety. He'd never played safety before in his life. Did a pretty good job. Yep, a lot of Horned Frogs are playing awfully well. The guys you got to mention are oh, those three linebackers. We had two, Brad Smith and Reggie Anderson, 14 tackles each. And what about Scott Hines, 11 tackles. That group is really coming on. And the guy in the secondary, Anthony Hickman once again. Ten tackles and an interception to end the game. Boy, are they fun to watch play defense. <laughs> Employing the bend but do not break philosophy, the TCU defense played big when it had to last Saturday. Reggie Anderson with another outstanding performance. At their own 20-yard line, a gain of maybe one on the play that time. It was the drop by Reggie Anderson. The secondary led by Anthony Hickman. All those tackles and the big interception late in the game. Let's it fly, going for the home run, down into the end zone. Hill is there, and it is intercepted by TCU. TCU has had one picked off in the end zone. Anthony Hickman has come up with his third interception of the year. Linebacker Scott Hines also had a big game. Tony Rand, his usual steady self, recording eight tackles before going out in the third quarter. Oh, there's some running room here. 
all the way up to the 22-yard line. We've got a TCU player who is uh, slow getting up. TCU, fourth in the nation in rushing defense going in, had another outstanding game against the rush, giving up just 74 yards on the ground. Third and two from the 25-yard line, and they're not going to make the first down. They brought in an extra linebacker on that play. You see Brad Smith quickly come up. Roosevelt. The Red Raiders managing just two scores on their homecoming, one by land and this one by air. The star of this game, though, no doubt, was Roosevelt Collins. At least six unassisted tackles, one sack, two passes broken up, and the one interception for the touchdown. A performance to rank with some of the best in school history. It was a proud night in West Texas for the visitors, as the defense celebrated TCU's unblemished record. And when it was over, TCU had run off with an impressive win. But by the time this team reached the locker room, thoughts had already turned to tonight and Arkansas. I got one question for the prayer. Who are we going to beat this next place? Arkansas! 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 1991, it stars like Roosevelt Collins and Tunji Bolden. Boy, are those guys playing. Anthony Hickman. But 1955, there was a guy here by the name of Hugh Pitts. He was an All-American center linebacker. He had to go the entire game. Back then, hey, they didn't get substitution. You went both ways. And I'll tell you what, did Hugh Pitts ever dominate? <laughs> Number 54, Hugh Pitts, a classic two-way performer. An All-American center, he cleared the way for many of Jim Swing's historic runs. On defense, his play at middle linebacker helped TCU win some memorable games, like this one in November 1955. The Frogs whipping Texas 47 to 20. TCU rolling on to the Cotton Bowl. Hugh Pitts, a TCU blast from the past. I'm gonna have to I have a football coach crazy, I tell you. And it was a hard-hitting game out there at Tech, and there were a bunch of guys on both sides had to come off the field. Did we lose anyone? Yeah, Rico Wesley went down. We don't think he'll be able to play this week against Arkansas. But hey, the good news is it'll give someone else a chance. It'll give someone else a chance to step in who hasn't gotten a chance to perform before as a starter, and they'll take up the slack just like we did at that quarterback spot. Remember all the concern and so on when Leon Clay went by down? Well, I'll tell you something. Right now, we got a quarterback system going where we're switching back and forth on uh, Vogler and Shade. Those guys are doing a super job for us. It's beginning to look like Jim Wacker has the perfect answer to Leon Clay. Two quarterbacks. When TCU is in pure passing situations, Tim Shade gets the call. 4-10, TCU leading 3-0. Shade's got a lot of time to throw the football. Into the hands of Blackway. He's got the first down all the way across to the other side. And when the situation calls for the wishbone, Matt Vogler is in the game most of the time. Out of the wishbone set, third and one. They get off in time, and Markins has the first down inside the five. Down. We're going to do whatever it takes for the team to win. If it takes, you know, every other play, great, we'll do it. If it takes, you know, one of us starting here, one of us play later, one of us come in during a situation, a certain situation and we'll do it it really doesn't doesn't matter to us you know it's it's great to win so that's all it takes well you know i don't know about uh, switching off plays you can't get a quarterback to get in there and get hot with uh, switching off every other play um the way we do it now whoever's has the hot hand is going to play after the oklahoma state game vogler upset with a lack of playing time made an ill-advised statement to the fort worth star telegram a remark he wants everyone to know he now regrets I did say a few things in the paper as far as, you know, being upset about not playing. I'm, I should have done that because that's going to hinder the team. And I apologize, you know, papers and everything for, for saying that and the coaches. And it, it never, uh, I never meant it to be that blown out of proportion. Fogler realizes the only thing that matters is winning. Maybe that's why there are so many smiles on the TCU campus these days. It's one of the best feelings I've ever had in football. Um, it just... You know, when you're 4-0 and, and the campus is, you know, the campus is different, you can kind of sense something, you can, the town will be different, you know, and, 
and it's just a lot of fun. And this week, the big question in the media, Coach, who in the world, what are you going to do about that quarterback controversy? Who, you know, how do you determine who you play? It's easy. It's by gosh and by golly. One time we put in by gosh and the next time by golly. Who in the world knows? Remember 1984? Remember when it was Anthony Scaraffa and Anthony Gully? Huh? All we did was say, Anthony, get in there. I had no idea who was going in. Maybe that's what we have to do this year. Who cares? They're both doing a great job. They're both fine quarterbacks, and they're both getting the ball to the receivers. That's the key. Guys like Richard Woodley. Gee, did he have a game. Let's take a look at the American Airlines play of the game. It was a great catch and run by that little A-back. Oh, what a night. We'll get one more play before the third quarter is over. Shade from the 30-yard line. He's got a man open. It's Woodley at the 20, the 15, down to the 10, the 5. He stretches all the way down to the 2-yard line as he gave Tracy Saul a ride. That might be the play of the game at this point as time has expired here in the third quarter. And should have known the answer to that question was fearless Frank Windegger. I mean, he's been around here forever and ever and ever. He's worn every hat you can imagine at TCU. And for the last two decades, he's been the main man in the athletic department. He is the guy that's put it together, that's made it happen. And what a great job he has done. Frank Windigger first set foot on this campus in 1953. His presence has been a fixture here ever since. A member of the last TCU team to start the season 4-0, he says plenty's changed in 36 years. Yeah, you know, well, we were the only game in town. We didn't have the Cowboys, we didn't have the Rangers. You know, I can uh, remember turning around from the bench one day and looking back in the, our lower boxes, which we don't even use anymore, uh, and the Reverend Billy Graham being in attendance. So uh, it was great days, and, uh, you know, I'm uh, always feeling those days are coming back. His love may be TCU athletics, but his passion is NCAA legislation. While the NCAA is in a reform movement, cutting scholarships, downscaling athletic programs, Windigger has a bold, if somewhat controversial, plan. It's called the five-year proposal, giving student-athletes five years to graduate, a seemingly sensible proposal since most students get their degrees after four and a half years of school. And with that, I think it answers all our problems in that five-year period. Number one, you don't have to worry about redshirting. If they can play all five years, more power to them. Uh, if they get hurt, you don't have to worry about making a call on a hardship. If you have a very, very poor student, uh, he can be worrying more about being in the classroom and on the practice field. And how much support is there for Windigger's plan? I think it's going to be, a, it's kind of like a, uh, I had, had a little rock when I started and it started down, got a little snow on it, and it's getting a little more all the time, but I think it's going to have to uh, hit a certain point halfway down the hill where there's enough interest in all and people understand it, uh, that it's not truly a monetary question, it's more a question of uh, what's right and what's going to help graduation rates. This morning, though, Windegger's concerns are more immediate. The Razorbacks are coming to Fort Worth for the last time, and Windegger wants you to give them a big send-off. This place ought to be jammed, and I want it jammed in purple. I'm sick of seeing the hog red. And those wearing purple have a chance to win two round-trip tickets anywhere in the U.S. American Airlines and Southwest Airlines each giving away four round-trip tickets to fans in a purple mood. It's just another one of Windigger's ideas to bring that 50s feel back to Fort Worth. That's right. It's uh, flog the hogs with purple togs this tonight. It's Saturday morning. We're playing Arkansas tonight, and who is that up there in the bleachers working on the seats? That's Frank Windegger. You thought I was kidding, didn't you? You thought I was kidding when I said he does all kinds of things and wears all kinds of hats. He's an amazing critter now, I'll tell you that. But what about the Horned Frogs right now playing Arkansas? You talk about a challenge. They're one of the best defenses we're going to see all year. Mick Thomas and those linebackers, they are tough, they are physical and they are really playing good on the defensive side of the ball. There are only two losses to Ole Miss and to Miami, two top 25 teams. They are a good football team, and we are going to have to strap it on and really play hard. And, folks, it's our last shot. 
Hey, since 1920, this series has been going on. They have really meant a lot to the Southwest Conference. But now it's ending. It's our last chance. It's their last chance. And that adds a little bit to the mystique of this football game. It will be the 67th meeting between the Frogs and Razorbacks today, a series that began in 1920. The current edition of the Razorbacks are 2-2 two and two after losing to Ole Miss last week. Arkansas has an outstanding young quarterback, freshman Jason Allen. He ran for 153 yards and passed for 123 against Ole Miss. Arkansas also has a gambling defense, which isn't afraid to blitz. Last year, though, TCU won 54 to 26 in Little Rock. The Hogs haven't forgotten. We get beat like that, like we did last year. It was just kind of, it kind of hits you in the in the bad spot. It's Union Pacific Railroad night tonight, folks, for their employees, and we appreciate them back in Horn Frog football. And what about Cousins Barbecue? They are giving away a dozen smoked hams, the best hams in the entire world. You be there. It's hog night in Heyman Carter Stadium, 7 p.m. tonight. Join the festivities of fun. It is going to be a great frolic. TCU football with Jim Wacker is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas, Radio Shack, American Airlines, Blackman Mooring Stomatic, Gatorade, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of North Texas, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, Southwest Land Title, Bruce Alford, Cambridge Clothier, Benny Keith Gift Store, Malcolm Loudon, and F. Howard Walsh, Jr. And I'll be going You know I hate to You bet we did. We'd love to be 5-0. and But right now, at the halfway mark, we've got a tremendous opportunity. We are excited about this Horn Frog football team. Take a look at where we're at right now, the opportunities we have. First of all, defense continues to improve and get better. We're ranked 10th in the nation right now, rushing defense, 24th in the nation in total defense. That's a far cry from where we were a year ago, folks. This is an improving defensive football team on offense. We're 10th in the nation in pass offense, and that's even with uh, one of our quarterbacks, Leon Clay, going down with an injury, Shaden Vogler having to come in, and boy, what a great job those guys have done. And what about total offense? 29th in the nation. Now, that's not bad when you consider there are 106 Division I schools. This is a pretty good Horn Frog football team. We're moving into the third quarter of our season. We're excited about the prospects. We're excited about the direction we're going right now. TCU fans have a reason to be proud of their Horn Frogs nearly halfway through the 1991 season. On opening night versus New Mexico, an offensive explosion. 573 yards and 60 points against the toothless Lobos from Albuquerque. 60 to 7 the final tally, but it could have been much worse or better, depending on your point of view. Playback, touchdown TCU, into the end zone, completed to David Lewis. When you're down 44 to nothing, you don't kick a field goal. They're gonna go for it. Man is open, picked off, picked off by TCU. Hickman's got a lot of room at the 50, the 45. He might score, trying to catch up. The 20, 15, 10, touchdown TCU. Here's the pitch, back to Colors, touchdown TCU. Nothing against the Lobos, but was this the kind of competition you expect to see from the Southwest Conference this year? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to go out and just play consistent every week and, you know, and uh, hope we win. 
This picture reveals all you need to know about Ball State in week two. Leon Clay injured while trying to run out the clock with less than three minutes to play. TCU would win 22 to 16, thanks in part to Clay's play through the first three quarters. Lone back set from the Cardinals. Fifth 14 yard line. Clay wants to throw. He's got a man open. Blackwell touchdown. Kelly Blackwell from the 14 yard touchdown. And Leon Clay took his time, finally found him. And Blackwell with his second touchdown of 1991. He's at the five, four, three touchdowns. Stu Dickens into the end zone for TCU. And the Frogs get another touchdown. One back set in motion is the tight ends. Stu Allison, the give is to Crooms, and he won't get the first down. Third quarter, Frogs up 15 to 7. Crooms again on the carry, bounces around. He gets knocked out of the backfield and finally is wrapped up. First and 10, in motion, Travis Moore. Far side of the field. Give is to Crooms. He'll be wrapped up. Tungy Bolden is there. Reggie Anderson shows up. Fourth and six from the TCU 10-yard line. Travis Moore in motion. Who's going to throw the football? He looks. Has some time. He's going to be sacked. We had a good base the first game. We've just been gradually increasing ever since. So, yeah, I feel like we're getting better. Later in the week, we would talk with Clay, out for the season with a broken bone in his leg. Can't let everything get you down, but you know, that's, I mean, it's part of the game of being injured, so, and mine just have to be longer than everybody else's, so you have to take those, take the bad with the good. Week three, Oklahoma State, Tungy Bolden's outburst reveals just how emotionally draining a football game can be. The Horn Frogs race to a 21-0 halftime advantage. But as we'd come to learn midway through this season, no lead is too large. Ford will stay in as the quarterback. Ford down the field, man open, touchdown Oklahoma State. With one last chance to erase an improbable 24-point deficit, the Cowboys march inside the five for the game's final two plays. Let's go, Brad! Come on, defense! Come on, Rezzi! Get it on, baby! Ford from the three, 34 seconds. Clock continues to wind down. Jumping over the top. No, it's Ford. Wrapped up on the fake. Seconds remain as Oklahoma State stays on the ground, hoping to score the go-ahead touchdown. Ford quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Again, they go to Berrien. He's up to the two and wrapped up. Steve. Ten seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds, seven. The clock continues to wind down. I don't think Four, they can get it off. Three, two. One, TCU has won the football game. The Frogs have won the football game as time runs out. Texas Christian University holds on to an exciting 24-21 victory. Great job! Bet! Bet! Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah! Hoping to go 4-0 for the first time in 35 years, the Horned Frogs showed real character in Lubbock coming from behind to win here for the first time since 1972. Nice to get around the caller, corner, and he is pushed out of bounds. Second and goal, TCU, Vogler on the keeper. He's down to the one. It's third and goal from the one. Vogler doesn't get in. Out of the wishbone set. It's fourth and goal. Vogler gives the colors. He jumps over and he's in. In his first year of college football, Derek Cullors has been both electrifying and mystifying. My own is number 31. It is first and goal from the second. Cullors is in! Touchdown from the two as he takes off and goes airborne. Three touchdowns are his second touchdown in the game, and Cullors now has on the season six. Derek Cullors, how about Southwest Conference Newcomer of the Year for a guy who's just playing his fifth game and the Southwest Conference. It is third and one from the Arkansas 21. Gev is to the ball stripped and Arkansas is recovered. Arkansas comes up with a loose ball. Derek Cullors had it knocked away. Let's go, baby. Let's go. He's got to throw the ball. Throw the ball. And so the Horned Frogs finish their first half with a four and one record. As Coach Wacker said, better than most, but with the toughest part of their schedule still ahead. So how do the players evaluate their performance at this juncture? We asked a few. Well, we're four and one right now. We would have liked to have been five and zero, oh, but uh, we had a really tough loss against Arkansas. 
Um, last week we worked a lot on the basic fundamentals um, and we got everybody healed up so that this week could, we could prepare and get ready for Rice and uh, move on. We play good in the first half, you know, and come back in the second half and all the teams have outscored us in the second half, you know. We learned that we got to play a four, four quarters, a whole game, 60 minutes, you know. We can't play one half and be satisfied and just relax. We got to go out and finish the game. We, we got to we gotta have that uh, killer instinct. We would have liked that one extra win, but you know, right now we're, our offense and defense is playing good enough to win games. And uh, as long as we keep getting better, you know, in the next six weeks, six or seven weeks, uh, we'll be fine. During the course of a football season, you've got to keep improving. You've got to keep getting better. And one group that we were really concerned about at the beginning of the season happened to be the old line, the offensive linemen. You know, we graduated three outstanding players there and so on. And, and boy, hey, the good news, a lot of young guys have really come through there. A lot of new faces. Today with us, we have Hugh Nall, our fine offensive line coach, and what a great job he has done molding that unit, bringing those guys together. We had a couple disappointments early. Keith Wagner goes down, one of our starters and so on. Uh, boy, we may be getting him back, but Hugh, what do you feel right now? What, where do you feel the direction is we're going with that offensive line? Coach, the big thing right now is the attitude of the kids. Uh, and in fact, we had the week off. They're getting healthy. They're, they're uh, getting back to full speed. But, but these kids are working hard. The attitude's good, and, and uh, they know that uh, we've got to continue to do that to uh, to improve. And uh, that's the biggest thing right now. I'm excited about the way they're playing, the way they're trying. And if I tell them to be out there 20 minutes early, they're there 20 minutes early. Dude, that really has been a fun group to work with. They are improving. They are getting better. And you know, the amazing thing, even our depth is getting a little better. What about Keith Wagner? You know, David Breedlove is back. Are you going to get Wagner back? What's it look like right there now? We feel like uh, Wagner will be back, Coach. He, uh, he'll be in a backup role this week, uh, of course, at his quick tackle position. Uh, Breedlove's uh, getting healthy off the sprained ankle, so that gives us two deep at the, uh, the center position as well as Breedlove backs up the quick guard position. Milby has come on and played really well for us at the uh, strong tackle position. So we, uh, we are, Coach. We're getting some depth finally. We're seeing some kids, you know, perform like they're supposed to. And, Hugh, the two I'm really excited about, what about Jody Morris and Big John Marsh? Boy, you talk about two guys that had to come through when we had those injuries. They have really been dominant, haven't they? Coach, you're right. They, uh, you know, they started out uh, a little bit slow, and then, but Jody has been our most consistent performer and done a great job for us. Well, listen, I'm just awful proud of them. I mean that. You and as a, you know, the, the schedule now, we take a look at that conference schedule. It's going to get tougher and tougher, folks. Let's take a look down the road and see what those offensive linemen are going to be up against. <laughs> Years ago, recruiting a young man, from Shreveport, Louisiana, by the name of Roosevelt Collins. We walked into the high school that day, the first day I ever met him, and here he was in a white shirt and tie. Now, you don't see that in high school very often. He's an impressive young man. You know, when we recruited Roosevelt, just like all the youngsters we recruit, we talked a lot about not just football, we talked about life. We talked about, hey, trying to do something really special with your life, academically, as a human being, character-wise, the whole thing. Well, if there's one guy that epitomizes that on this football team of being a total person, a well-rounded person, not just a great football player, also a really fine student, a guy that's got his direction in life going the way it should be, it's Roosevelt Collins. Am I proud of that young man? They need to get to their own 25 to keep the drive going. Gill's going to have to go to the air to try and find the first down. He's got a man picked off. Roosevelt Collins has it at the 10. He's still on his feet. The 5. Touchdown, TCU. Midway through his senior season, Roosevelt Collins has been the Horn Frogs' most valuable player. For two successive weeks, he was Southwest Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Longtime Frog followers can't remember the last time a TCU defender has done that. Collins, though, seems to be taking all the praise in his very large stride. As far as personal goals, I don't really have any personal goals right now. I'm just trying to take it a step at a time, a day at a time, and do the best I can do. You know, uh, it's the only, as good as your last ball game. So I'm just trying to continue to get better as the season goes along. Collins, a graphic design major, realizes that some find it hard to accept this tough defensive lineman who's also a talented artist. Along the way, 
he's had to endure the jokes. I used to walk across campus with a tackle box in my hand. Not really a tackle box, but an art bin. And Leon Clay used to think I'm, tell me I was going fishing every day. He'd see me going across campus. I told him I'm going to class. They think I'll be going fishing somewhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, those new classes, you know. Uh, uh, and I think the whole team's envious of him. Uh, but like Coach Wacker said, I wanted to take the class, but you know, I thought I might catch a cold. So <laughs> that's that. <laughs> So this shy kid from Shreveport understands the attention he gets comes with a job, but he'd rather sit off by himself, sketching or reciting the poetry he writes himself. Can you stand the pain? I feel like through a cage of a series of downs and distance, my sight doesn't exceed 100 yards, and when it does, my world of chance becomes blurred by a rays that only strong at heart can understand. Sometimes I cry because I try so hard to be better than you, but never giving in to the pain and the sorrow. It is the pain and sorrow which drives me to the point of understanding. I understand that the pain and sorrow which turns inside me is that which drives me. A wise man once said, he who tries with all he has given of his heart and soul will one day come to understand the meaning of life. My life a chance is to understand is to never give up. I will give up myself, heart, body, and soul just for one moment in time to understand the meaning of winning. You, my friend, must go through the pain. My body pains for the day when I'm victorious. How many defensive linemen in America do you find that are poets and artists? Oh, I like that piece on Rosie. But I'll tell you what, there's another thing I liked, and that was the American Airlines play of the game. Let's take a look at one of the great plays in that Arkansas game. It's one freshman to another, Tim Shade throwing a strike and a great leaping catch by freshman Derek Cullors. Is that youngster coming out? TCU needs 14 third and 14 back to the 48 of the Razorbacks. A long way to go. Shade, he's got some time. Looks down the middle. Oh, great catch inside the 25-yard line right over the top. Who pulled that one down? Who else but Derek Cullors? And who was the guy that he went over? Nice pass. Kenneth Davis. He's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Bills. Is it ever fun to see those old pros doing good like Kenneth Davis? What a great run. What a tremendous career that young man has had and so many others. But, hey, how about the rookie this year? What about Larry Brown, the guy with the Cowboys? Drafted in the 12th round. Nobody thinks he really has a chance to make it. Not only does he make it, he is starting for the Dallas Cowboys, and they're in a row. Boy, are they playing good. One reason is a horned frog by the name of Larry Brown. Uh, I think I matured as a person uh, at a young age over at TCU, and it really helped me to, you know, with my career now. Three linebackers expecting the Bears to run the ball. J.J. Joe Will, he pitches wide, frogs recover the fumble. Carmichael Moore couldn't come up with that wild pitch, and TCU's Larry Brown comes off the bottom of the pile with what could be a huge turnover for the Horned Frogs. They present discipline, uh, just to be the best that you can be, uh, work hard, and as uh, long as you work hard, you never fail you. You know, not many schools have a Heisman Trophy in their trophy case. TCU's fortunate, because back in 1938, when the Horned Frogs were national champions, they had a quarterback, and man, did he make it happen. He was first-team All-American, won the Heisman, the Maxwell, and the Walter Camp Award. The only college player to ever win all three of those awards. His name was Davy O'Brien. Let's take a look at a couple of those great plays back in 1938. 1938 is a banner year for quarterback Davy O'Brien and TCU football. O'Brien leads the Horned Frogs to an unbeaten, untied season. Ten straight victories and the national championship. He is unanimous All-American and named winner of the Maxwell Trophy. On December 4, 1938, the announcement is made. Davy O'Brien becomes the fourth winner of the Heisman Trophy. With his mother, he travels to New York to receive the award. So in closing, I would just like to say that I thank you with all my heart for giving me this trophy and to my coaches and my teammates who made it possible for me to receive it. You know, we 
could really use Davey O'Brien right now. I mean, the quarterback situation. First, we lose Leon Clay, broken leg, starting quarterback. And then, of course, Matt Vogler goes down. He is, is cooking. Can you believe that? Doves, of all things. A grease fire. Burns his hand. Hey, he's going to be out for at least a couple weeks. Hopefully not the season. So, hey, right now, we can use all the support we can get. One of the areas where we get great support, how about that TCU band? It's the best in the land, folks. They are super. I know, cheer the team on. I think we're a pretty important spirit organization, not because we really get them up so much as we get the other team down. Being here behind their bench, you know, we pick out individual players and kind of rag on them a little bit. <laughs> With us getting going and getting the fans uh, getting behind the team and uh, just clapping and yelling for the team, I hope we have a, a part in firing up the team and making them play harder. Maybe try to distract the other team a little. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Who does your hair? Oh, myself. Good job. <laughs> Here we are, folks. It's the second half of the season. We're 4-1. and one. We've got a chance to do something really special, 1991. But it's all going to come down to this third quarter. It's going to come down to three games. This week, it's Rice, and then, of course, followed up with Baylor, and then SMU here at home. And it is not a cakewalk. You talk about some tough ball games now. Rice just coming off a great, great upset of Baylor that was a number eighth ranked team in the nation. What a great, great win for Fred Goldsmith and that Rice football team. And then what about, you know, the Baylor Bears? They're playing pretty good, folks. They're still ranked 16th in the nation next week. Do we have our work cut out? You bet we do. Are we excited about that challenge? Yes, we are. Because this can really be a special, special season. But it all comes down first, foremost, and always to the Rice Owls, to this weekend. Hey, Trevor Cobb, the number one leading rusher in the nation. What a great year that man is having. Their offense is exploding. They're putting points on the board, and we have us a challenge. The Horned Frogs have had two weeks to digest the season's first loss. The bitter defeat to Arkansas has taught the Frogs a lesson or two. I think the loss made us learn a lesson to not hold on to a a big lead going into the second half and just thinking that we have the game in our hands already. I think we're going to go into the Rice game knowing that it's going to be four quarters of hard football playing. So we're just going to have to keep holding on to just keep scoring. <laughs> and as if this team needed a wake-up call, the Rice Owls provided one last week, upsetting Baylor 20-17. to it was the Owls' first win over a top 10 ranked team since 1965. The Horned Frogs know that to win, they'll have to stop the nation's top rusher, Trevor Cobb, averaging 177 yards a game. He's not, he's not a real big guy, but he just knows how to hit the holes. He's quick. And our defense being right now seventh in the nation, uh, we're going to we're gonna be challenged by, by Trevor, but hopefully we'll be able to cone, cone to the ball and... Uh, Maybe hold him to below 100 yards. I know he won't get 200 yards on us. Um, we are good. We control the ball well on defense. You know, you got to love a celebration. And do I ever love Ed Galavis? Is he a fun young man? A senior, he's got his act together. And gee, he's having a great senior year. But I'll tell you, what about now the Rice Owls? It's all on the line, folks. When this one is over, we want to be able to celebrate again in that locker room. We are going to play a tough, tough Rice football team. But we're going down there. We have one thing in mind, and that's come home with a great, great victory. Hope some of you get down there. I hope you support us. Let's make it a great day for TCU in Fort Worth, Texas. Field, wants to hit the homer, he will. Woodley is wide open at the 20 and they score. Boger gets good protection.
Richard Hill as he throws down field for Shipley Cox. Football with Jim Wacker is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas, Radio Shack, American Airlines, Blackman Mooring Stomatic, Gatorade, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of North Texas, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, Southwest Land Title, Bruce Alford, Cambridge Clothier, Benny Keith Gift Store, Malcolm Loudon, and F. Howard Walsh, Jr. Distinguished and decorated aces, one and all. The